two years ago, from my research, I'm convinced it's much more serious than that. It's more than a loose-knit network. It is a conspiracy. In 1784, a copy of this document was sent to the Illuminous Weissop and delegated to foment the French Revolution. You mean the Illuminati was responsible for the French Revolution? Yes, absolutely. The courier was struck dead by lightning as he rode through Radisson, Radisson on his way from Frankfurt to Paris. What about a little divine intervention there, huh? The police found the subversive documents on his body and turned them over to the proper government authorities. After careful study of the plot, the Bavarian government ordered the police to raid Weissop's newly organized lodges of the Grand Orient and the homes of some of the most influential associates, including the castle of Baron Bassen Sonderdorf. Additional evidence was thus obtained, convinced the authorities that documents were a genuine copy of a conspiracy by which the synagogue of Satan had controlled the Illuminati at the top, planned to use wars and revolutions to bring about the establishment of one kind or another of a one world government, the powers of which they intended to usurp as soon as it was established. In 1785, the Bavarian government outlawed the, the Illuminati and closed the lodges of the Grand Orient. In 1786, they published the details of the conspiracy. Um, the new order of the world, our enterprise is now a success. He said these blind slaves say they are free and highly educated even as they march behind, notice this word, signs. Have you ever taken time to analyze a sign or a billboard or a logo? We'll start up here. In 1784, an act of God placed the Bavarian government in possession of evidence which proved the existence of the continuing Luciferian conspiracy. This explains the previous nine pages, goes into it in detail. We don't have time to do it completely. Conspiracy. Uh, Adam Weishoff, a Jesuit plain professor of canon law, defected from Christianity and embraced the Luciferian ideology while teaching at Ingolstadt University. In 1770, the money uh, lenders who had recently organized the House of Rothschild retained him to revise and modernize the old, age-old protocols designed to give the synagogue of Satan ultimate world domination so they can impose the Luciferian ide ideology upon the re what remains of the human race after the final social catechism by use of sat satanic despotism. Weinshoff completed his task on May the 1st, 1776. It's a communist holiday, isn't it? May 1, 1776. The plan required the destruction of all existing governments and religions. In 1776, Weishaupt organized the Illuminati to put the plot into execution. The word Illuminati is derived from Lucifer and means holders of the light. Weishaupt's revised plan required his Illuminati to do the following things to help them accomplish their purpose. One use monetary and sex bribery to obtain control of people already occupying positions in high places in the various levels of all governments and other fields of human endeavor. Once an influential person had fallen for the lies, deceits, and temptations of the Illuminati, they were to be held in bondage by application of political and other forms of blackmail and threats of financial ruin, public exposure, and physical harm, and even death to themselves and their loved ones. Number 12 told those present that they must use their wealth to have candidates chosen in public office who would be obedient to their demands and would be used as pawns in the game by the men behind the scenes. The advisors will have been bred, reared, and trained from childhood to rule the affairs of the world. Number 13, control the press. Number 16, infiltrate into the secret Freemasonry to be used for their purposes. That's been documented many times. Number 17, expound the value of systematic deception, use high sounding slogans and phrases and advocate lavish promises to the masses even though they cannot be kept. I will not forget the wound to our country and those who inflicted it. I will not yield. I will not rest 
I will not relent in waging this struggle for freedom and security for the American people. So I, I don't know where he is. Nor do, you know, I, I just don't spend that much time on it. We will not tire. We will not falter. And we will not fail. Uh, terror is bigger than one person. And I remember he was telling me how, <laughs> how you're going to see soldiers looking in caves for people in, in uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan and all these places. And it's, and it's going to be this war on terror, of which there's no real enemy. Who knows if he's hiding in some cave or not. Uh, we hadn't heard from him in a long time. Operation Northwoods, the plan called for innocent people to be shot on American streets. This is the Pentagon for boats carrying refugees fleeing Cuba to be sunk on the high seas, for a wave of violent terrorism to be launched in Washington DC, Miami and elsewhere. People would be framed for bombings they did not commit. Planes would be hijacked using phony evidence, all of which would be blamed on Castro to justify an invasion of Cuba 40 years ago. An aircraft at Elgin um, Air Force Base would be painted and numbered as an exact duplicate for a civil registered aircraft belonging to a CIA propriety organization in the Miami area. At a designate time, the duplicate would be substituted for the actual civil aircraft and would be loaded with selected passengers all boarded under carefully prepared aliases. The actual registered aircraft would be converted into a drone, remote controlled plane, their word for it. Takeoff times of the drone aircraft and the actual aircraft would be scheduled to allow a rendezvous south of Florida. I mean, he's been tested unlike any other president. This 9-11. We have in this past year made great progress in ending the long era of conflict and cold war. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be. He argued that the use of any and all means to reach their final goal was justified on the grounds that the ruler who governed by the moral code was not a skilled politician because he left himself vulnerable and is in unsuitable position to his throne. He said, those who wish to rule must have recourse to cunning and to make believe because great national qualities like frankness and honesty are vices in politics. Fellow citizens will meet violence with patient justice, assured of the rightness of our cause, and confident of the victories to come. In all that lies before us, may God grant us wisdom, and may he watch over the United States of America.
Union Banking Corporation was liquidated by the U.S. government, and Prescott Bush received $1.5 million for his holdings in his Nazi business, and that was the beginning of the Bush family fortune for all intents and purposes. George Bush takes his inspiration from what he learned in Skull and Bones and from the Thule Society that Hitler and Goebbels and Goring cut their teeth in, Bohemian Grove, these evil organizations that perpetrate the ugly things that these criminals are doing to this country for which they must be held accountable. They are the most violent, dirtiest people on the face of the earth. Somewhere, Americans are going to have to take their country back and start finding out who are these people. Who are these people we call our representatives? The Bushes. George Bush, the president, his father, went around the country talking about a new world order. The people who are running this country from behind the scenes do not care a thing about Americans or bloodshed anywhere. You were both in Skull and Bones, the secret society. It's so secret we can't talk about what it. What does that mean for America? The conspiracy theorists are going to go wild. I'm sure they are. I don't know. I haven't seen the web. Number 322. <laughs> Sir. Are you a member of, were you a member of Skull and Bones and Collins and Bush? Did you the secret society? That's all right. Let me answer this question. And what you're looking at here, staggeringly, is um, a group of people, some of the most famous people in America, in long gowns. Behind them there, you see a 40-foot stone owl. And there's the fire between them, next to the lake at Bohemian Grove. Now, one might wonder, understandably, why the people that run the banking, political, um, economic system, and the media, in America should be dressed in long robes doing a ceremony to a 40-foot stone owl. I think we should be told. And no doubt you'll be hearing about all the differences between John Kerry and George W. Bush. Uh, but we've discovered they do have something in common. During their respective college days at Yale, they both belong to a group called Skull and Bones. He's come pretty close. She was part of a team that successfully recorded part of the initiation ceremony that takes place in the tomb's courtyard. Okay, you have the doorway here. Yeah. Okay, then to the right you have a hedge and yeah. then you have um, an evergreen tree. If you follow yeah. that line straight back, courtyard's in there. Ah, uh, okay. So, so that's where they have the ceremonies in The, the outdoor part yeah. of it. Part of it was indoors. So we only got to see the outdoor part. Right. We only got to, and, and to listen to the outdoor part. God only knows what went on indoors. And what did you hear? What, what was it you know? You managed to get this unique Oh, access it was disgusting. To it. it was gross. I mean, they were pretending to murder people. What was the tone of it, though? Was it, was it jokey? Or was it no, it wasn't jokey at all. It was, it was sick. It's about the only thing to describe it. It was sick. What you're hearing is the first recording ever made of the Skull and Bones initiation ceremony. It has never been broadcast before. Fifteen new members of the club are being introduced into the macabre rituals of Skull and Bones by the senior students who are about to graduate. The club has what some might see as a strange fascination with death, skulls and bones. 
there's the chance too. Difficult to hear first of all, but including the devil equals death, and death equals death. But when you get into a secret society of spirit worshippers, then and especially when you're invited there by the direction of the higher ups in the spirit world. You never get out of there alive. And he told us, he says, look, we worship spirits. We worship Lucifer, the, Lucifer and all his angels. They're just as beautiful as they did before they were cast out of heaven. He says there was a misunderstanding in the whole thing, he said, in the, among the inhabitants of the galaxies. And he says, our master was misunderstood. And they always praised the, the great master, Satan, as a super intelligent being that he is, beautiful to behold. And if he ever appears to you, you won't be able to look upon him because he'll be too bright. What have Herbert Hoover, Art Linkletter, Jack London, and Richard Nixon all had in common? Well, they've all been members of the exclusive all-male Bohemian Club in California, where every year at this time, the elite from around the country get together for two and a half weeks of uh, fun and games. Among its members are businessmen like Leonard Firestone and Edgar Kaiser, and political figures like Gerald Ford, Henry Kissinger, William French Smith, and George Shultz. President Reagan, Vice President Bush, and Defense Secretary Weinberger are members of other camps. Richard Nixon is a Bohemian, and so are high-ranking executives of such companies as Eastern Airlines, Standard Oil of Indiana, and Bank of America. Privacy is one of the Grove's most cherished virtues. Members may not photograph, record, speak, or write about activities at the retreat. While many public officials are Grove members, the press is a distinctly unwelcome guest. We're from ABC News. Well, get back there. Get back there. Can we talk to somebody in there? Get back there. You see, for over 120 plus years in Northern California, in Sonoma County, on a 2,700 acre secluded redwood grove, leaders from around the world, prime ministers, chancellors, presidents, governors, again, the heads of industry, banking, academia, the media, Hollywood, travel there to engage in bizarre, ancient, Canaanite, Luciferian, Babylon, mystery religion ceremonies. We were inside four hours. That's only one day out of the two weeks that they meet there for the admitted summer fire festival of the Bohemian Club. Thine empty, we 
showed me the sign that this summer sets us free. You don't burn me once again! Which hither ye have brought from regions where I reign. Ye fools and priests, I spit upon your fire. Hail, fellowships, eternal flame. Once again, this summer sets us free. <laughs> Bohemian Club? That's where all those rich Republicans go up and stand naked against redwood trees, right? <laughs> I've never been to the Bohemian Club, but you ought to go. It'd be good for you. Get some fresh air. One last question. I read a Washington Times article many years ago where you had a comment about the organization and then now it's been in the Wall Street Journal, it's been in a lot of different newspapers and that's the Bohemian Grove and back in what was it, 1996 when you joined uh, as a Clinton advisor, they were, the Republicans were criticizing you, oh what about Bohemian Grove and then, you counter, uh, and then you countered them by saying, hey I don't run around in the woods naked, what did that mean? Here is the before mentioned Washington Times article where he said, I didn't run around naked like they do. I, I, don't, I don't know what I don't know what quote you're referring to. I'm not aware of any quote like that. Uh, listen, uh, I am a, a, a happy member of the Bohemian Grove. I like the, the folks who come there, and uh, it's really inappropriate for me to uh, talk about a uh, uh, the group beyond that. Thank you. Have you been there for the ceremony with uh, the cremation of care? Uh, frankly, that's, uh, that uh, I don't think that's something I need to talk to you about. Really? That's right. Well, I'm Alex Jones, and I snuck in there in 2000. I'm the guy that blew it wide open. You got the video. It's been on national TV. Well, I disrespect you for that. You do? I do. There's a lot of big public officials going in there. You don't we deserve to know? You took an I don't know anything about you, and I don't know anything about your film. But if you go in there with an understanding, you violated that understanding by releasing that film, and I don't respect you for that. Really? Well, you we have public officials. You, I'm sorry. Public. You took an understanding when you went in there that you would not to do that film. And you, did you have an understanding when you went in there? No. Did you crash it? Yes. Yeah, and it has no trespassing signs there, too, doesn't it? No, they put yes, them after. Oh, I'm I sorry. Just in. I'm sorry, sir. I've been there before. I know what, I know what the circumstances are, and I'm sorry you uh, violated the understandings. That was, not, that was not a gentlemanly thing to do. But what about the ritual? Is the ritual gentlemanly? <laughs> You, I, I, don't, I don't owe you this comment. I know. You, 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 you have, you, this is what's called ambush journalism, and I disrespect you for that as well. So thank you, you ever and goodbye. Have you ever been of your damn business. Today our nation saw evil, the very worst of human nature. They had exactly the same agenda, and that was for bringing in this new world order. I heard George Bush talking at that time, he was talking to to Bill Clinton, and, and I've since photographically recorded it and, and wrote it verbatim in our book. 
that when the American people became disillusioned with Republicans leading them into the New World Order, that Bill Clinton as a Democrat was going to be put into the office of president. This was decided in 1984. Actually, I'd heard about it even prior to that. But that, as of 1984, they were already discussing it as an absolute fact. The CIA is carrying out mind control on countless numbers of unwitting American victims. And he even went so far as to say the basic methods that they use in this mind control, hypnosis, drugs, and torture. Three parts of policy that they had uh, adopted there. The second one was to find a way of being able to get total control of people's minds. And that would be done by taking hypnotism out of the realm of the occult and introduce it as a new science for the benefit of mankind. reflect in a policy of genocide either against the Tibetan people themselves or against their culture. Once I realized I had met an honest, genuine, high-level Freemason who told me there were 13 levels of Freemason above the 33rd degree, and that these people were God. There was no God, they were God. So I asked them about their plans to kill people, and they said, yes, there are too many people on the planet. We need to get rid of, of several billion, and war doesn't seem to work, so we're going to use disease and starvation. He knew what was happening and he attempted to warn us when he left office. He told us, quite bluntly and in no uncertain terms, to beware of the military-industrial complex. And who is the military-industrial complex? It is the members of the Council on Foreign Relations. And since the inception of the Trilateral Commission, the Trilateral Commission as well. was made up of the executive committee of the Council on Foreign Relations. Now it is extremely significant that you understand that the first six members from the government along with President Eisenhower were also members and longtime members of the Council on Foreign Relations. They believed in that organization. They believed in its goals, which was one world government. Number 15, create industrial depression and financial panic, unemployment, hunger, shortage of food, 
Use this to control the masses or the mobs and use the mobs to wipe out all those who dare to stand in the way. Well, I'll tell you right now, every expert I've talked to is talking about food shortage. And it's coming, I'm convinced. What, what were they? Because they, uh, I'd never seen anything like that. And, uh, and his statement was that if he told me, I would be one of the few people in Madison, Georgia, that knew about them. And he says they're, they're uh, disposable coffins. They were stacked, uh, he told me, 15 high. One of the driving forces behind this movement, the Illuminati, is the satanic cult movement in this country today. So I began my little journey forward. And one of my, one of the matters that I had developed information about was an individual I learned about was Alistair Crawley. He likes to bring, have his name pronounced Crowley to rhyme with holy. And uh, the Satanists today and for the number of years in the past, have basically used his philosophy and his writings as a guide. He had so many Masonic degrees that you could fill up five pages of a book with them. This guy was probably the most highly honored Mason in the world. He styled himself the wickedest man in the world. He believed himself to be the great beast. And he changed his name to Aleister Crowley so he could, it would add up in both English, Hebrew, and Greek Kabbalah as 666. In 1904, Crowley had a communication with an extraterrestrial being named Iwas. And this being, through his wife, <clears throat> kind of a channeling type operation, brought forth a book that was called the Book of the Law in 1904. And this book declared that the slain and risen God, i.e. Jesus, had stepped off the throne and that a new God, the crown and conquering child, was taking his place. As a result of this, Crowley proclaimed the end of Christianity and the start of Crowleyanity. Crowley taught that the way you could live forever was by vampirizing little children sexually. And he personally bragged of having slaughtered 150 male children in one year. This is why he was called the wickedest man in the world. And now listen to this sentence, folks, closely. For the highest spiritual working, one must accordingly choose that victim which contains the greatest and purest force. A male child of perfect innocence and high intelligence is the most satisfactory and suitable system. We're talking about human sacrifices. also drug them up and they take a sacrificial knife and they'd start from the chest and move all the way down to your abdomen and then that's how they sacrificed and they collect the blood and they drink it um when the mid-september through um in november they sacrifice babies and nothing but babies because they need the pure blood of the untainted children and I was really I didn't understand what it was like because I can't believe I'm seeing this every every year of my life I've experienced that and I was that was the hardest part for me it's like hearing those babies literally scream and cry seeing their blood flow. The little boy 
he was taken to a basement. He was crucified alive. First he was skinned. Why is it that no one knows this? Because there's Satanists in the police force and also in the government, the army, they're everywhere. They're even on the council of yeah, the represent representatives of the United States also. And they're silenced because this is not being exposed because they don't want it to be exposed. Because they're really good at lying and hiding things. Rebecca, what happens to the people that want to come out of Satanism? They get killed. They get followed. They get taken. They get sacrificed in front of the congregation of the Satanic Church. Why? Because they know too much information about the Satanists and who their names and places of where they keep the people underground and they just know too much information. There's no, it's like I'm being in a gang or in a mafia. You don't get out alive without consequences. their own businesses. The Illuminati owns most, I would say, 99 and 9 tenths of the stores that you walk into and shop and the gas stations you go to. And they are going to destroy them on purpose. And the idea of taking over is to bankrupt the whole world where nothing is of any value and the currency does not exist anywhere and then come back and solve all the problems. guys who are, who are manipulating my mind and programming me for mind control purposes claimed, and these criminals in control of our country as well, claim to be gods, demons, and aliens in order that I feel totally helpless, in order that I felt like they were beyond my realm to affect. Why do they keep the aliens in a Faraday shielded environment? Because they have a tendency to disappear right through walls. And if you can prevent the transmission of electromagnetic energy, you can stop them from doing it. Then, this, the medium said, we have a very special surprise tonight for you people. A spirit will manifest itself openly here in a few minutes and right through the wall. <laughs> now the, the lights weren't uh, terribly bright, but they, you know, they were like in the living room lights. Uh, a couple of floor lamps, and maybe some of these. And that uh, translucent being seemed to come right out of the wall. How did you feel right at that moment? It's almost like my heart stopped a little bit. <laughs> you know, very weird feeling. She was, was a lady in a beautiful evening gown, swirling. And she said to Mary, my dear sister, you are so wonderful to have asked for me. So, he said the, the supposed spirits of the dead that you're talking with are demon spirits. They're fallen angels. They're beautiful beings. Just set it out, just like Oh, that. yeah. 
It didn't make you uneasy when he said they were Well, it shocked you a little bit, you know. Something that you first hear uh, uh, mentioned to you. He said, uh, you guys have got a great future ahead of you. Because we've been told, the high priest of our society, secret society, has been told that the master has very special plans for you to now, what did he mean by the master? Uh, Satan. He said that she was made successful in her singing career by a dear friend of hers. It was the same age as she and died when she was 18 years of age. And L Loretta was trying to get into the, the singing world, you know, but it, it, it would, she says, I had no success at all. Until one night I was sitting in bed reading a book. And she says, who walks right through the wall with my, my friend, the spirit of my friend? And she says, Loretta, I'm going to make you a very famous person in singing Western uh, country music. And I will be with you all the time. She said, her voice went through me, the power. See, and you saw this in a television documentary? Like, yeah. yeah. This was, I believe, 1976, it took place. Now, the priest explained that when people believe in this business, they are actually opening themselves to be completely deceived by demon spirits. Because it gives the demon spirits an opportunity to impersonate the dead. See? And for people to believe their lives. Isaiah 14 and 11 even speaks of vows being built into his body. Vows are Pipes. The Piper is calling you to join him. The Illuminati doesn't produce rock music to entertain you. They don't produce rock music to make money. They don't need that money. They own everything anyway. They do it to put demonic influence in your life. men meeting in secret who directed the course of civilization are recorded in the writings of all people the oldest is the brotherhood of the snake also called the brotherhood of the dragon and it still exists under many different names the brotherhood of the snake is devoted to guarding the secrets of the ages and to the recognition of Lucifer as the one and only true God if you do not believe in God, Lucifer, or Satan, you must understand that there are great masses of people who do. And their beliefs and actions based upon those beliefs will affect me. The important fact to remember is that the leaders of both the right and the left are a small hardcore of men who have been and still are Illuminists or members of the Brotherhood. They may have been or may be members of the Christian or Jewish religion, but that is only to further their own ends. They are, and always have been, Luciferian and internationalist. They give allegiance to no particular nation, although they have used, on occasion, nationalism to further their causes. Their only concern is to gain greater economic and political power. The ultimate objective of the leaders of both groups is identical. They are determined to win for themselves undisputed control of the wealth, natural resources, and manpower of the entire planet. They intend to turn the world into their conception of a Luciferian totalitarian socialist state. In the process, they will eliminate all Christians, Jews, and atheists. You have just learned one, but only one, of the great mystery. But now it had, it had to change. Lucifer says, we have made sure that people, humans, get to believe that, uh, that Satan and his angels do not really exist. That's what they're trying to do. 
they're trying to disconnect us from multidimensional infinity so that we don't see the world from that perspective and therefore see through the illusion and see through the nonsense and see through the lies and then once they've disconnected people they then program this lower level of our consciousness with a reality that suits them and therefore the only um, information that they uh, have to uh, get a fix on, on how they see life themselves and reality in general is through the eyes and the ears. And who controls that? The Illuminati control that. They're trying to disconnect us from multidimensional infinities. And then once they've disconnected people, they then program this lower level of our consciousness with a reality that suits them. If, we, if there's a reality out there pertaining to any alien influence, we need to sort out the government misinformation and disinformation and mind manipulation techniques that they're using. I know for a fact that the plan is to make all of us feel totally helpless. That what's happening is beyond our realm to effect because we've been taken over by aliens. That our independence day is dawning. So beware of that. Understand that those criminals have been keeping information and technology from us under their blanket of national security. They are 25 years ahead of us at least. They're way ahead. So when they say, it's aliens, it's aliens, and they show us some incredible technology, don't, don't fall into the trap of feeling totally helpless that this is beyond our realm to affect. Superstition begins where knowledge leaves off. And they have been keeping knowledge from us for a long time. People have all kinds of belief systems. And I'm sure each and every one of you has various and different belief systems as well. I'm not saying that there's no such thing as aliens. That would be foolish of me to even, even say anything like that at all. But what I am saying is that my, it was my experience that these were people claiming to be aliens. Some of the people in this world are about to destroy the sovereignty of nations, take away our Bill of Rights. Exactly. The UFO thing is integrally tied into this in some way. I'm not exactly sure how, but if extraterrestrials are real, then they're controlling everything. They're not real. They're being used uh, as a as a as a threat from without to scare people into coming into this one world global unity of humanity in order to face that external threat. In the process, we're going to lose. The, the ordinary man will lose. You need to understand this information is deliberate deceit to hide other things, and so uh, there's so much of that, and uh, and some of it is surprisingly well sponsored disinformation. I'm going to sum up this talk and mention an overview of the alien agenda. The alien agenda is to really decimate the planet to take the remaining human subjects as slaves and the aliens would use this planet for their own means. My question I'd like to ask is this. If the aliens have a 1,200 IQ, can speak all these languages and are so powerful, what prevents them from just taking over? That's a good question. We are an alien species to them, and our germs have a tendency to kill them. <clears throat> they're also a dying race, and they're in far worse condition than anybody with the worst case of terminal cancer. They are in need of us to some degree. And, uh, and some of it is surprisingly well-sponsored disinformation. So I think my, my question is actually to... My question is to Clifford Stone. You, you said that you had seen aliens on a, on a craft that had crashed. I wondered if you could describe what they looked like. I could. I could, but it would probably take a whole lot of time. The reason I state that, when I got out in 1989, we had cataloged 57 different species. Uh, you have individuals that look very much like you and myself that could walk among, among us and you wouldn't even notice the difference. The 
uh, situation is that you have various types of what we normally call grays. We didn't call them grays in the military, but you had at least three types of the grays. You had some that were much taller than we were. Uh, the unique thing I th uh, that I'd like to point out for the most part is that the entities that we did catalog were in fact humanoid. Now this created a situation where the scientific community was trying to figure out why that would be the case. Because you would expect that if life evolved on other planets, that they would take on some type of other uh, being, so to speak. Not necessarily look humanoid or be bi bipedal such as we are. But apparently, we got quite a few of the species out there that are humanoid in appearance. And that creates a question that yet has to be answered by science. Does that explain some of the uh, visual glances of these things? They seem to just simply disappear. They're gone. Exactly. I mean, they're they're appearing out of nowhere uh, and then disappearing right in right in front of people. And that's why scientists who have no access to grind, they just say that it doesn't make that much sense. And also, if they're just trying to observe us to uh, take account of what we're doing on Earth. I mean, after a while, after so many months or years or centuries, it kind of gets old. They either would take us over or they've already discovered all the information they need to know about Earthlings. And so they're just going to take us over or make first contact and just sort of uh, do what they need to do next uh, to endlessly observe us. It doesn't, doesn't make any sense. It's something where, and also, see, if there, we have all these sightings, as you know, much better than I do. Um, why, where are they landing? We don't see them getting out to get anything to drink or to eat. We don't see them, um, they've never no. tried to make, you know, contact with any large amount of people in a major city. Um, and, and so this doesn't, and also all the endless medical procedures that the people who have claimed to have been abducted, 
you know, why the endless medical procedures? I mean, if we're talking about such an advanced race of alien beings, they don't need to do that over and over and over again. Interesting perspective. Let's talk about some of the facts out there of evidence that may support your conclusion that the UFOs are spiritual phenomena, not physical, like so many other people also believe. What, what can we pinpoint again? Well, again, it's something where you cannot have a material or a physical being penetrating the ground, penetrating the water, appearing in front of people, then disappearing instantly, and then also changing colors, sometimes only when they're accelerating with every color in the spectrum that has been recorded. Uh, many UFOs coming and making one UFO, one UFO breaking apart and then going into multiple UFOs. It's, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. And then not, not only just that, but to get into the fact of how far they're traveling uh, and the speed that they would have to travel and just the other problems with cosmic dust and traveling at the speed of light and then running into the, those bits of cosmic dust, the explosions that would be created, the amount of energy that would be consumed uh, and traveling from these distances. Um, just all those kinds of things really scream out that you're dealing with a spiritual phenomenon, not a material or physical phenomenon. There does seem to be a, a deception here, because I've always wondered, you know, my gosh, if they're that benevolent, if they're that understanding of humankind, make yourself available. In yeah, your, and, and, and that's, that's why, um, you know, some of, these, some of these other scientists have said that they, they seem to be trying to set people up to, to deceive them as if they are aliens, but the facts just say that they, they can't be that, that there's something else. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't make any sense, and there's something else, a psychological deception that's going on here. And many of these scientists say, I don't know what it is. But we've concluded that it's got to be that. It's got to be something bigger is going on here than just them trying to show people that, yes, you know, here's a UFO that you're seeing now, we are aliens, that, there, that there's got to be something else going on here on top of the fact that the characteristics of them show that they just cannot be some material or physical craft. Do you think... <clears throat> Do you think humans are involved in the deception? I'm losing my voice here. I've got to pop it back. Um, as far as inside, I think there, there have been deliberate hoaxes that have been perpetrated. And, uh, you know, it's an interesting statement. I mean, there are many that could be quoted. Um, but uh, Gordon Creighton, who I know you know of him, yeah. uh, probably, who died in uh, 2003, he made this statement in the British journal Flying Saucer Review. He said, quote, there seems to be no evidence yet that any of these craft or beings originate from outer space. They appear to have the ability to materialize and dematerialize without a trace. One of the great mysteries of the UFOs isn't seeing them, is trying to figure out where are they when you don't see them. Some people say, well, they're from another galaxy. Lot, most physicists will debunk that for lots of reasons. They seem to pose that way, but for lots of, if they came, you know, if they, if there are that many coming from another galaxy, you think you'd sense the traffic. We'll come to back with some more reasonable uh, explanations, and you're going to discover the, the two top researchers in the in the last century, really, is uh, Jacques Vallée, France, and uh, J. Allen Hynek, the American. Now, J. Allen Hynek 
was uh, head of astronomy at, at Cornell, and he set out to debunk this nonsense about UFOs, and he became one of the most ardent, competent, balanced researchers in the trade. J. L. I. He, he died a few years ago. Both of these respected researchers came to the conclusion that they're not intergalactic. For lots of physics, there are a lot of physical uh, physics rebuttals to that conjecture. They both argued that these things are demonic. Their term. They've written many, many books. You can check them out. These are not uh, uh, religious people. They're not people with any kind of personal agenda. But they came to the conclusion that these things, on the one hand, and, and by the way, we, we take for granted that we strip away the nonsense and the hoaxes, set that aside. There's tens of thousands of files you have to wall through. When you, when you cut through all that, there's still a core group, a substantial core group, of real events that need explanation. And uh, so on the one hand, they exhibit physical properties on the one hand. On the other hand, they also violate all physical laws. And so the conclusion from that both J. Allen Hynek and Jacques Vallée and others have come to is that they're hyperdimensional, that somehow they come from another dimension periodically. Both of them came to the conclusion that these creatures are hyperdimensional. They're not from some other galaxy. They also both concluded they're hostile because they pretend to be something they're not. Brother Michael, who are now beginning to believe that as well, so you're not all, you're not out there all by yourself anymore. So these these demons would make them then spiritual phenomenon. Uh, I would take it, right? Yeah, I think when you look at it, I mean, there's certain characteristics that everyone will agree has been seen and demonstrated also by these UFOs, such as they penetrate the ground, they penetrate water, they disappear in front of people, they appear right in front of people. One person will see a UFO and the person next to them will not see the UFO. They change colors, sometimes only one accelerating. They change shape, they change size. Uh, many people have made the comment that they seem like they're alive almost. And so these are all characteristics of something that's not a physical or material uh, being or um, construction. It's got to be something that's a spiritual phenomenon with those kinds of characteristics.
somewhere between 1 and 3 percent, various, various polls agree, somewhere between 1 and 3 percent of Americans claim that they have had an abduction experience. That's over 5 million people, or in that neighborhood. Not a few thousand deranged people, not a few, you know, disaffected. This is, uh, we'll talk a little more about this. This is a, this is a very, very disturbing phenomenon in the, cons in the counseling uh, profession. Now, part of the problem of the UFOs is they have some paradoxical behavior. On the one hand, they're seen by multiple competent witnesses. They are plotted on radar, sometimes multiple radars simultaneously. They leave tangible traces on the ground, sometimes radiation, evidence of burning, and other things. So they are apparently real in the sense of being physical, on the one hand. There are photographs. Sometimes they show up on photographs, sometimes they don't. But here's the problem. They do, while they seem to be tangible on the one hand, they exhibit behavior that can't possibly be physical. They can go in excess of 6,000 miles per hour without sonic booms. What on earth does that mean? I'd like to know how they do that trick. They've been plotted making right angle turns at over 16,000 miles an hour. That defies the laws of physics. That's a, now the more, and, and the, perhaps the most disturbing thing of all, they appear to have the ability to materialize and dematerialize without a trace. In his book, Secrets of the UFOs, ufologist Don Elkins made the following observation. I have found that some people can achieve the contact phenomenon simply by being hypnotized, and the same general message permeates over 90% of the millions of words received by thousands of people around the world. No one knows what hypnosis is. No one knows what goes on in the mind. It's an altered state of consciousness like yogis and uh, witch doctors have been practicing. Uh, it loosens the normal connection between your spirit and your brain. And of course, if the hypnotist can control you, make all kinds of suggestions, make you think uh, things are happening that are not happening, make you think you have powers that you don't, experiences that you haven't, even implant memories. Uh, other beings, if there are other minds out there, they could also do the same thing. ritual uh, that was uh, performed on the very spot where Area 51 happened uh, really? by this uh, Jack Parsons, yeah, and in which they had this mag magical ceremony called Babylon Working, and it was designed by Aleister Crowley, who was a Satanist who called himself the B-666, yes. and the, the purpose of this series of magical ceremonies, which was performed on the spot of Area 51, uh, where it's now located, was to unseal an interdimensional gateway, they said. And so and this, they hoped, would allow other entities known as the, quote, old ones, access to our space-time uh, continuum. And this witness said that he saw Jack Parsons rip a hole in space-time there, and he said that something evil flew in. And one other interesting point is that Aleister Crowley, who was a Satanist, who called himself the B-666, as I just mentioned, he claimed to have contact with some kind of alien um, named Lamb. And this Lamb, he drew a picture of this, this alien that he was in contact receiving messages from this being. And the, the, pictures, the picture that he drew of this alien, uh, it's a striking resemblance to the common gray E.T. drawing. And obviously they have the secret base there where advanced aircraft is being tested. And so it's not one or the other, it's actually both. And what's interesting is this fellow Jack Parsons, who was the main person involved in the satanic ritual, he was 
involved in creating some of the most advanced technological uh, stuff that we have right now in rocket propulsion systems. Um, he was even involved with a lot of the stuff that NASA does. They even named a crater on the moon. It's called the Parsons Crater. It was named after Jack Parsons. Right. right. So you see the, all the connections here. You know, I've long believe that if there is satanic activity on this planet, and I believe there is, if they are in constant communication with these demons, or even if they conjure them up, Brother Michael, is it possible they do with their rituals and things like that? advisor to Queen Elizabeth I, Sir John Dee, he was a Kabbalistic black magician. Of, uh, he uh, had gone to the continent and learned from the top Jewish Kabbalists black magic and he was the chief advisor in the, in the British Empire and he created Enochian magic and the Enochian language which uh, the Illuminati, which are hiding behind the Jehovah's Witness headquarters, they, they uh, in, use Enochian rituals. Sir John Dee conjured up demons or angels, okay, with his black magic. The beings that he conjured up, it, uh, there were pictures drawn of them, and they look identical to what we call gray aliens. Okay, I'll tell you something. And then I uh, visit with debriefing people that came out of high levels of the Illuminati. And these different types of aliens are participating in Illuminati rituals. Uh, no, not, um, 
towards the end of the last hour, you said, uh, uh, East of the Rockies, you're on the air, and your voice was immediately replaced by the operator saying, your party has not connected. Oh, uh, well, well, see, as you can now tell, I don't screen calls. So right. what happened, obviously, was that I answered the phone just at the very instant that you had been ringing as long as they were going to let you ring. Yeah. And so that occurs, obviously, sometimes I go to a line and it's uh, dead and nobody's there. And that's what's happened. You know, we just were right. on the cusp there. Anyway, I'm glad uh, you made it back through. Yeah, you got all my paranoia buttons uh, running. I always get very nervous when, when I call you. Uh, I'm Brian. I hung up on you last week. Oh, I see. And uh, I just figured, damn the torpedoes. Uh, I'll just do this and let the chips fall where they will. All right. Um, Everybody, I am the Area 51 caller. Um, that's that's my statement, and let you or whatever tear it apart. <laughs> you you claim you're the Area 51. I I am the man. How do you account for the fact, Area 51 caller? Okay. That part of the way through your spiel, the satellite went down. I have no idea, and it scared the heebie-jeebies out of me that night. <laughs> Uh, I've called a number of times on your specialty line nights doing different you know, kind of wacky characters and I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't know what you wanted me to do. I, I knew it was very difficult for me to prove to you, um, uh, but I just thank you for, for your, your patience in, in dealing with me up to this time. All right. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? What could be more alien to the universal aspirations of our peoples than war? of darkness, don't you worry. Who are you? Who are you? The Keeper? Rebecca? Rebecca, Keeper, get out of the way. I command you to stay out of the way. Rebecca? Yes? Say, I, Rebecca. I, Rebecca. One love. <laughs> stay out of the way, Keeper. Stay out of the way. Stay. I want, I want out. Say, I put my trust. I put my trust. In God. In God. In, in God. Stay out of the way, kid. God. So what they're doing, in effect, is using the secret society network they've set up to manipulate these bodies into power but in doing so they're putting themselves into power because they're controlling the mental and emotional processes of these vehicles.